10 bowl champion. And welcome everyone to Las Vegas. We are at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino at the CSI Expo where Predator and Rums of Puerto Rico present the Predator WPA World 10 Ball Championship. A truly international field of 64 players competing for $250,000. A prize fund, $75,000 to the winner. This is a first round winner's round, so they've each played a, a match. Alex Kazakis from Greece and the 2019 World 10 Ball Champion, Ko Ping Chung. In the booth today, you're going to have myself, George Teacha, and Chris Reinhold calling all the action for us. Chris is a pro from New Orleans and Southern Cal, very well known on the West, Bosconi Cup uh, combatant. <laughs> there you go. And uh, here we are calling the action for these two guys. Uh, one thing I'd like to get out there right away is Dave Pearson, our referee, is from Amarillo, Texas, and he wants to send prayers out to the people out there because there's a 436-acre wildfire. Quite uh, something serious there. So here we go with pool. For so we got Alex Kazak is to break from the right-hand side rail. And he's aiming for that one ball in the side. Let's see where it goes, high or low in the side pocket. And let's see what happens. Let's see if that nine ball follows it in. Yeah, they both go to the side pocket. That's exactly what happens in a lot of the cases. They bump each other out. Yeah, it depends on the speed for yes. sure, but they're both tracking in that same direction. So code to the table is first look at Kopin Chung. One of the co-brothers. And what a year he's had, huh? He just took down, uh, well, he's a billiard, uh, coping change, the Billiard Digest Player of the Year. And he won the 2023 U.S. Open nine ball. He was a semi-finalist against Kopi Nee in 2015 in the World 10 ball championships. And his brother put him on the loser's side. And his brother went ahead to win the tournament. And then in 2019, it was reversed. Koping Yi was a semifinalist, although they didn't play each other, and Koping Chung won the tournament. Yeah, it's brotherly love right there. That's right. It's called Trading Places. Isn't there a movie about that? <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of high left English here, aiming for that second rail. He went, uh, where's the oh. cue ball going? Oh, into the, into the corner of the side pocket. That's right. I think he'll be happy, though, with how things turned out because he didn't leave a straightforward lockup safety, so he's going to have to move the cue ball a little bit here. This is 10 ball. Races to four. Two or three races. But if they're tied, the third one is, is the deciding set, which if it's tied at three games apiece, it goes to a shootout. WPA rules, no early 10s. The 10 will be the last ball pocketed. If it's pocketed early, it just counts as a reg regular object ball and uh, gets spotted. So he shot the one ball bank. It was more of a two-way shot, but just in case it went in, he had shape on the two. And I think he's going for the 10 ball here, George. Yeah. Ah, safety. They'll usually, uh, well, there's no, there's no prize there. If he's going for the 10 ball for a win, it's worth going. The safety is what you're going to have to do with these short races. Uh, Ko Ping Chung won't shoot at anything he doesn't think he can make. He'll play safe. And I think he made a great decision because he's two real, Alex Kazakis is now two real kicking this two ball. He's going to try to send it towards the side pocket in that area, but uh, it's going to be a little touchy here. Yeah, I was going to say he might call it in the side, but he's going to want to send it up by the six or the three, and the ten ball might come back behind the, uh, uh, the cue ball might come back behind the ten. Excuse me. So straight in shot on the two ball. I think he's going to stop it right there for the three in the upper left-hand pocket. So he has some angle to go from the three to the four. He's either going to draw this under the seven in the side pocket to put the four ball 
past the 10 in the lower right hand pocket or he's going to stun out. I feel like he's going to stun out here. Middle table. Yeah, beautiful stroke there. It's, it just looks so flawless. You know, he just gets so much energy on that cue ball with a lot less effort than other players. Good look at the players. There is the three foul rule. There's also a 30 second time clock. 60 seconds after the break to plan your attack. And then uh, 30 seconds once a rack. Yeah, he's just the, it's just simple elegance here, you know, just dancing cue ball, going from one spot to the other spot, and just kind of taking what the table gives him. And look how beautiful that stroke is, George. Yeah. Uh, what's a, another thing to watch here is the difference between the way Alex plays and the way Coping Chung plays. Alex has a little more power to his game. Coping Chung is all um, touch, and he's smooth as silk. Yeah, I agree. Alex uh, tends to spend more time on each shot, and he yeah. puts a little more brain power uh, into each shot, where I think Ko is just more fluid, and he's methodical, but you know keeps it simple and just you know reactive. He is always on the correct side of the ball. That means having the the angle that runs the cue ball to your next shot, with with naturally, doesn't have to do much. Just a little nice smooth stroke. Probably about a, what, a four inch take back? No, he goes way back. Depends on the shot, for sure. Yeah. He needed a little more power there, so we use that momentum yep. from the backswing. And the first game, this 10 ball for the first game. Goes to Koping Chung. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I was trying to pull some information up, <laughs> and I fell short. Yeah, Ko Ping Chung is, has the sixth highest Fargo in the world at 835, 850 being the highest, which is Joshua Filler. And uh, he has the f he's fifth on the Arizona Billiards uh, money list from AZ Billiards. At 176 k for um, 2023. Not a bad day at the pool hall. Yeah, it's not bad at all. He's just lucky this isn't a beard going contest. But <laughs> since it's not, he won the first rack. Yeah. <laughs> and he's to break the second rack. In fact, he was fifth in the World 10 Ball Championships uh, here last year. So not only does he finish high in two of them, he... Uh, Finishes high all around. Won the Sharks International Nine Ball. That was in uh, Vietnam. The Sharks tournament. I think that was Philippines. Oh, Philippines. Okay. I, I could the be Philippines. Wrong. I yeah, could it was. You're right. Yeah. He won first there. He was 17th at the China Open. Um, U.S. Open Nine Ball. He was second in Qatar. Third in Hanoi. That was a big tournament in Hanoi. So, um, uh, Ko Ping Chung is from Chinese Taipei. And I want to say a big shout out to Miss Campbell, Ellis, and Miller Watkins listening to us from San Francisco. They happen to be my grandkids, folks. Big shout out. So, he's looking to push this cue ball to the left corner pocket, right where Ko, Ko Ping Chung is at. And he might duck behind the three here and send the one ball back up table if he lets him shoot. But he's going the opposite way. And we're just going to have to take a look and see what he's got. I think he might be able to run that one ball into the nine and or the seven and try to push him behind this nine ball. I have no... I guess we're going to learn something here. I'm definitely going to learn something here. <laughs> it's a very doesn't have a ton of angle to do work with here, so I think he's going to give it back. I'm still trying to figure out what I do. I 
I didn't know that angle was there. It's not bad there. Yeah. But he, seem, he might be seeing a lot of the two ball next. <laughs> like uh, froze behind it. Well, actually, to do that, though, he has to go into the nine, so it's going to stay down low. He might cross it the same way and try to send it straight down the middle of the table, up table. Yeah, there's a slight chance he might try to play behind the nine here and the one ball behind the three. Oh, he oh yeah, he, he did, did the original he did go one. Exactly. Yeah, it's tough to hold that ball yeah. and well, not sell out. Yeah, he did a good job of missing the nine ball with the one. He has given him an easy kick. In fact, he may be able to see this with a little bit of swerve and play it in the side. Doesn't take much. If he elevates, you know what he's doing. He's going for the one ball on the side. Yeah, I believe he is going to do that. But the thing is, you don't want to get... You'd rather be on the left side of the table for the two to get over for the three in the same pocket because you don't want to have to play that three-nine combo in a weird way. He's going for the kick. No, he's not. He's, he's elevating, so he's, he's playing the ball. Oh, don't go in the corner. He's okay. And that's exactly what you called, Chris. The left side of the table to play the two ball and uh, maybe come over for the three. He's got the perfect angle. Just a little stun shot. Yeah, I like making sure that I go almost, if, if I'm going to use draw on this, I use a little bit of draw and try to go into the nine if I have to just as long I'm focusing on what I have to do to have a good stroke through this two ball. Yeah, just like that. And the nine is your blocker. From time to time, folks, we will have some stats put up on the screen for you that come from this match. Take a good look at those. You can see a lot of things that stand out like missed shots, uh, player overall performance, uh, break percentages, um, all those, uh, you know, go into making that player overall performance. But uh, they're provided by uh, Michael Salmon and Avi Pandi, Pandi from uh, the Stat Guys. Yeah, I think he got 50-50 on this. You know, it's he just got a little weird on this. I think he's going to use low right English, more spin, less speed, and try to spin this four ball in and hold it for the five. But you want to kind of slightly overcut this a touch. Just make sure you cut it enough. Oh wow! And look at the shot he comes up with. Look at the look at the speed he hit that with, and the shape on the five. Yeah, I think he got away with it there. You see how Alice Kazakis and a lot of these other players, they're very technical and it looks fluid, but the Cope brothers just look so much more fluid through the ball. It's, it's so beautiful to watch. And they're, they're, they're all a little bit more uh, feel, more, uh, uh, they're just so smoother. They stroke the ball. There's hardly ever any power unless, you know, it's really needed. Um, Koping Ni does, does a little bit more than, than Chung does. And it's going to go oh. in a nice <laughs> spin on that ball. Alex Kazakis was in the mixed doubles, and he was runner-up to uh, the Chinese Taipei uh, team of uh, Chang Zhonglin and Ch Cho Cheyu. Yeah, they played phenomenally yes, they the whole did. event. The whole event. They deserve to win that one for sure. Alex was playing fantastic too. They just uh, they were just uh, outplayed by the Chinese Taipei, and that's that's saying a lot because they played great. They were such a good chemistry the two of them together. It's a lot easier to lay your head on the pillow at night when your opponent outplayed you, opposed to you just dogged it. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, you dream about being a dog, so. <laughs> but not getting beat. You when when you get beat, you figure out why and do something about it. When you uh, when you dog it, all you can do is practice, 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 and don't do it again. 
or commentate like I do. <laughs> There's always that. I didn't get invited to this party. They didn't want me here. <laughs> but then I did, I, but in a but different way. But then you way. did, that's right. In a different way. <laughs> so, 10 ball in the corner for a, what is that? That is a 1-1 one, one. One, one to tie one. it up at 1. Is the key? Oh. He's taking his time on this shot. And tied at one. It's a race to four. Winter breaks. And you know, during that uh, mixed doubles uh, match, we had a match here on table. They were, they were playing, I forget who they were playing, their, their opening match. And I asked the chat room in YouTube to give us some names for Kelly Fisher and himself to team, name their team. One of the names was Souflaki. Another one was uh, Greased Lightning. And, uh, you know, since the first one was a reference to food, Alex's uncle owns a hamburger stand or a hamburger store in Athens, Greece, and it's called Home Burger. <laughs> and it's one of his sponsors, along with Predator, uh, In the Box Clothing, Tallinn Open. He won the Tallinn Open, excuse me, the King 8-Ball Pool Hall, where Alex is the the pro so um, pretty active breaking the third game he changed sides apparently because he broke to the other side the last time and pocketed the one uh, pretty obvious safety behind the eight or the combo on the nine what would you prefer here Chris um thin the two slightly and still leave it behind the nine and then go behind the eight uh it might be a little too touchy yeah he's either all in for the safety and leaving the two ball off to the left so if he doesn't get behind the eight he sells it out so yeah, it's a, it's a little weird in between, yeah. you know. It's just, it's kind of weird on both sides. He's going for it. And look at this. Hit a rail. Yeah, he's got one. Yeah, you still don't like leaving it that close to the rail, though. Yeah, not that close to the rail and not that close to a pocket. And it looks like he's got a natural angle to make the two. Oh, just a little bit too soon. No, a little too late. No, yeah, too soon. Because it over, it overcut the ball. Cut it to the top rail. It's been a fun week at the Rio. First five days. We're consumed with tournaments. The Las Vegas Open men's and women's 96 on the 96 players for the men 48 players for the women $160,000 on offer there for both tournaments and then we had the mixed doubles shoot um, shootout that uh, was one of the best events I've seen had eight pairings Men and women, of course, it was SVB and Ke uh, Allison Fisher, Kazakis and Kelly Fisher, who came in second there, Pia and Josh Filler, who came in fourth, Jasmine and Alvin Ocean, Margaret, Margaret and Tyler Steyer, Christina Tkach and Feder Gorst, Wei Tuchin and Kopinyi, and Cho Cheyu and 
Chang Jean Lin won the whole thing. But they enjoyed a night out in the town and a nice fancy dinner to bring that up. In fact, uh, Chang is playing right now, right over next to this table. Well, Alex is working this rack. Pretty straightforward on everything, that's Chris. Yeah, I mean here, just go to the six, come off that first rail, then come off the second rail, and in between the nine and the side pocket. Just make sure you follow through. It can be kind of weird, jacked up over this ball, but just smooth through the ball and accelerate. Just like that. He got a little weak on it. You don't want to be jacked up over the nine, but he's still okay if it, even if he is. If the eight passes the ten in the side, you just roll it on up. But if it doesn't, you're going to have to draw it back for the eight. About where the cue ball is now. Probably halfway in between where it is now and the seven ball. Chris, what goes through your mind as a pro player uh, as far as when you get over uh, the nine like this and you end up with that shot instead of a little bit further to the left where you'd have a perfect shot or to the right? Um, it used to bug me, but now you kind of just take what the table gives mm -hmm. you at all times because if you were left this after your opponent missed, you'd be totally okay with it, right? Sure. So that's you the mindset you have to have. And there's advice from a pro player. In other words, don't sweat the small beans. Just um, take the pot. Oh, he's... I thought he missed that from the angle. I was looking at the table, not the, not the monitor. Yeah, it wasn't the cleanest in the world, but he had a little <laughs> good speed. go. He takes a 2-1 lead in this first set. Looking pretty good. More importantly, that was a break and run, was it not? No, no he played safe on the two ball. Oh, that's correct. Okay, But it should have been. It just got weird. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. But that, that two rail kick from Ko was a very well executed shot. It just barely missed. And that's a, it's a game of centimeters. Yeah, it really is. Dave Pearson is our referee. Concerned about his city area and the wildfire there. But right now he's working the racks and working this match. He is part of the EPBF referees. The European billiards. He is just hammering this break. He's hitting it really well. And he didn't get rewarded this time, but he kind of crossed them a little bit on the right side, while well, his right side of the rack. And the, all the energy didn't transfer the same way it did last time, because the last time he hit it square in the face on the one ball. The European Pocket Billiards Federation, EPBF. Okay, this is a really weird angle though, so you have to be careful here. Um, he might try to go low right and just get out of the way of that eight ball. See, see what he did there? Low right, gets it a stun out slightly different and it's, he hits uh, the contact point just, mm -hmm. a, just the ever so different on the ball, which changes the trajectory a little bit. Yeah, and you hit it with some speed and got a nice kill off that ball. That's right. See, these are tricks that they share, and they never tell me this, because that way I could play better. But no, no, they never tell me, folks. <laughs> that's right. They'll tell you low left. Yeah, that's right. When it was low right. <laughs> and, oh. raised, and raised the bat, right? <laughs> oh, he's got a good shot here.
So a little steep on this three ball. I really think he can just drag it to the middle of the table just like that. Beautiful trust in his timing and his cue execution there. You know, a lot of people would have to go multiple rails because they don't trust their stroke like that or they haven't trained enough to trust their stroke like that. So a lot of low left here, kill, come back over. They're just so good at this shot. Those kill shots, those little spin shots off the rail, the Coe brothers, the Taiwanese, they're just, they're so good at understanding how their cue deflects and how to get the most out of the ball with less, less effort. Draw back here for the seven in the opposite side. And coming down to get an angle from the eight to the nine. You don't want to be straight unless you're on the ten. Keeps his angle so nice here. Just come about to the middle of the table, slightly less. So he has angle from the nine to the ten. I think he went a little further than he would have liked. But this is still fine. A little bit of high left English. Come down to where he is now. Maybe a little further. And using that extra rail to make sure he gets good on the 10. And he got great on the 10. He's straight in to tie things up with this ball. Yes, he did. And we're tied at two in a race to four. Halfway there in the first set. Halfway in the first set. Got to play the second set, and whoever wins the first set. Whoever wins the first set, the worst they can do is the third and deciding set. Not a shootout. The third and deciding set, if it's tied at three games apiece, will go to a shootout. I saw a real exciting one with uh, Fetter Gorst and Conrad Yashushin. Had quite a few of those. In fact, let me see if I can bring you a little bit of info on that. As far as how many shootouts we've had so far in this tournament. We've had, we've gone through the first round completely. We had uh, 32 winners and 32 one lo on the one loss side. So we had uh, 32 matches and we had one. Oh. Nine shootouts. Nine? No, I'm shootouts. sorry, nine third sets, not nine shootouts. Some of those could have gone further, but we had nine third sets, which in the regular format uh, of the Pro Billiard Series would have been nine shootouts. So two ball behind the nine in the general area, and then the cue ball behind the eight, trying to run the cue ball into the 10. So controlling both balls here is key because you don't want to leave an easy jump or an easy kick safe. So with those, he's just gonna barely thin off the two, but he's gonna get it to come out to where the nine is right there. See that right there? And the, like I said, right there, and voila. Now let me ask you a question here. When you, when you play execute a safety like this and you get that close to your ball and there's another ball in the way, do you think to yourself against your opponent, say, here, jump this one? No, because now that the double jump has been invented, invented by <laughs> Jesus Atencio, I'm afraid of those. Whenever they get out their jump cue, I just look the other way and hope that I have another shot. I was actually there for that in Arizona when he pulled that off. And that video hit the, the Facebook social media. And, uh, and to tell you the truth, the night before he executed that in the tournament, he was practicing it for a good half hour and executing it quite a bit, high percentage of the time. Wow. Oh, look at this. Wow. A good deed never goes unpunished. He's got a three <laughs> rail. No, he doesn't. Uh, no, he does not. I was going to say he's got a three rail kick at it, but no, actually. I the think there's a six rail kick at somewhere. Six rail kick there somewhere. Somewhere. Right. somewhere. I'm sure uh, there is. Yeah, I thought he had a three rail kick out of the, out of the right hand corner pocket here, but that four ball's <laughs> huge there. And so is the seven for that matter. 
Yeah, he cut off all of his angles. Yeah. He has to go away from the ball yeah. to go to the ball. He's going to have to which go to about right where he's at. I was to say the first diamond, close to the first diamond of the head rail and hit before the side pocket to hit that deuce. He looked so much like Kopin Yi right there. When he got, did you see that? Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're brothers or something. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Stop it. Great shot. Almost made the ball. Sure, he's made that ball plenty of times <laughs> at well, different speeds. There's a system to, to figure out those two rail kicks. Um, I know you know it, uh, but for the viewers out there, uh, it was taught to me by a rock, uh, the rocket to Rodney Morris. Take the distance between the two balls and then uh, aim that right at the corner pocket you're coming out of and then parallel your travel line uh, into the rail next to it. And you'll make a good hit a big portion of the time. Just a hair of running English. Here it is again. He's going to play the same shot, basically, except for the rail, the first rail. He's going to play it one rail. Oh, he's just going to hit it. Never mind. He changed his mind. I think he's playing it off that ball, maybe. Could be. At first, I saw him aim off the rail, and that's about where it would be uh, to make that contact. So I thought he was going to play the same, same style of shot. Kazakis has an 816 Fargo, and he's 18th um, out of the top 100 in the world. So if you want to use Fargo as a rating uh, scale, he's the 18th rated player in the world. Ranked or rated. He's also uh, 46th on the Arizona Billiard Monday list. And last year made a little over 44K. He had a much better year the year before. Almost twice as much. That just covered his travel expenses from Europe. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Well, I'm sure Predator has something to do with that. He is sponsored by Predator. Homeburger. Homeburger, <laughs> that's right. In the box clothing. He'll never go hungry. One of his biggest wins uh, last year in 2023 was uh, the Italian Open in Estonia. So again, he's a little bit of low left here, stun back out, trying to get about where it is now, actually, with the cue ball. Not the cue ball, but where the four ball is now. That's where he's going to try to get maybe a little, a little more of an angle. Yeah. Just anywhere on that line, and he's on that line. That was almost line. exactly. Yeah. Damn. He's that was pretty close to what? <laughs> now, would you work it un underneath the seven to make I sure you don't get hooked with I it? I personally would, yes. yes. Just takes the tip of left English, and he'll be right over there. Put some, put some grease on that ball, right? Not very much. I was there. Cause he put quite a bit because he wanted to use both rails. That's where he's from. I was joking. Oh, some... I missed it. It went right That's over okay. my head. That's <laughs> Sorry. okay. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. You know, when David Alkaidi or FSR is playing, you know, you put Spanish on the ball. Yeah. We put English. English on the ball. <laughs> I like to put salsa on my ball. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Chunky or? <laughs> Pico de gallo. Oh, nice. Use a little bit of left English, or you just roll this in and play the nine in the corner? Um, I don't like uh, getting position for the side because if I, if I don't get where I need to get, uh, I'm going to have to run, run all the way around the table. So I'm just going to play position for the corner. Stop it right there. He's going to run it, though. He's going to run it over, and, and, and I can tell by his English. And uh, see? Here's a guy that plays Good pinpoint call. position. And that's why I would have played it to the corner. 
Well, especially with new cloth and new mm -hmm. balls. They slide so much, that's what it did there. And it's just, they don't take this the correct way. Now, you're bringing in the scratch in the trying to get to the tent. Uh, a possibility of it. There's a side pocket and... and, and uh, well, I guess not when you hit it that way. Well, I thought he was going to go the other way. That was pretty slick. I like yeah. that. I thought he was going to go the other way. Very good, very good. Very good. This is our international flavor by Chris Reinhold. Yeah. How's it taste? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, it tastes uh, three to two is what the taste is. Yeah, I don't think Co likes it. Nope. But he still can win. Oh, definitely. He's within striking distance. Uh, Alex? Always. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what the score is, he's in striking distance. And he's proved it. That's right. Alex will be breaking for the first set. Predator World 10 Ball. Sponsored by Q Sports International, Predator, Yalin, Kamui, Samsung TV, Pro Billiard TV, and Ramsa Puerto Rico in Medalla Light. Some of the big games uh, that went on in the last pairings or last round. Of note would be Coping Chung defeated Mikhail Oegard. And that was his first match. Alex defeated Bader Alawadi uh, to get where he's at in this uh, first round of the winners. Oh, here's a big here's a big win was for Hi Hayato Hijikata. Defeated two sets to one over John Mora. Jason Klatt, uh, the other Canadian, Jason Klatt, lost to Wojek Shevchek, 2-0. Wojek was our 2021, 2022 champion here at the Predator World 10 ball. Gerson Bosa Martinez. Defeated Edgar Vallenas, 2-0, straight sets. And Alex, at the table, looking at this one ball, planning out his attack here. Must have made the 10 ball on the break while I was reading out those scores. A little bump, no bump. It was Tough a bump, shot. but it wasn't friendly, was it? No. Could have been friendlier. I think he cuts this in. It was nice, but not friendly. You know, I think he can cut this in and go ahead and track right at that nine ball, because if it hits the nine ball on the right side, it's going to come out for the three. Should. Oh, he's going to bank it instead. Oh, he's going to bank it right by the three and hold the cue ball, maybe. No, get it right behind the eight. Yeah, he's called the pocket. Oh. Unless he changes it, he called the he called the corner pocket. Surprising. I I uh, I like the cut shot. I think the cue ball goes right into the nine, and I'd go ahead and play it into the nine. There's a lot of open space in the middle of the table there, and that should be where it kind of where it ends up. Now the two-way bank, unless he sells out. Oh my God! Oh my 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 my. Good shot. Wow. He didn't call it three rails. <laughs> but it'll do. It'll do anyway. You know, in some in some uh bars in this country, they'll <laughs> call you on that, won't they? Yes, they'll be they'll be happy to <laughs> That's <also>. right. <laughs> they'll See? be waiting for you to make a normal bank and that's be like, right. That's not how we do it around here, buddy. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> You've been there, huh? All of those places. <laughs> I was sixteen years old when I learned that lesson. Yeah, I, I, I. Sadly, I learned it later in life. Okay. <laughs> With thirteen dollars on the line, isn't that amazing? That's yeah. a lot. What do you do here with the six? Uh, he could come at it right now, but he, it'd be dangerous. He'll probably come at it here. 
If not, you know, he just might go ahead and, and get position to bank it in the same pocket where the five ball's going. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. It's kind of laying weird. Yeah, if there's a little space between the two balls, and there isn't, so maybe the bank's not, no, the bank's not on. He can't cut it. He just showed you he doesn't mind banking to the corners, so that would be a viable option for him, but uh, it's froze to the 10. So I can, I, I can see him banking the six behind the 10 and taking the cue ball to the middle of the uh, head rail. Creating distance. Just played off the 10. He's, what's he calling? Calling the bank. You gotta throw it into it a little bit. You gotta use a little bit of left. You gotta hit it thick and then turn it towards the pocket here. Beautiful shot. Did it go? No. Yeah. Call with the chance for redemption in this set. That's pretty aggressive. Sometimes you have to risk it for a the biscuit. biscuit. Huh? Yeah, I've heard that one. Uh, or the or for the shot in the seven, either way. He actually hit that rather well. He over he overcooked it because I, I thought if you miss that ball, being afraid to hit the ten, you're not gonna overshoot it. You're usually gonna shoot it, miss it short. Correct. Lengthen down on him too mm -hmm. a little bit. Just a touch. Yeah, he hit it pretty with good speed. Look oh, at this shot. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's such a, those are such good shots right there. It really just, I need to stop telling everyone how beautiful a stroke is because it sounds <laughs> like I'm just rooting for him, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's beautiful to watch. There's something you don't see too often. His eye dominance is right in the middle. Really? Yeah, there's not too many players. It's usually one side or the other. Not too many players will line up with the cue right underneath her chin and his nose right over the shaft. Maybe that's the ticket. Um, I wonder which eye dominance he has. Does he have left or right? I'd have to it both. You can yeah, you can you actually can have, have both. both. But watch him. Yeah, that's perfect. That's, he's right over it. Well, buckle your seat belt. Because mm. I just got pulled over. And we're tied at three. We got Hill Hill for the first set. What's your prediction on this game? Flip a coin. Oh, okay. I always say that when they're playing. I, I if I <laughs> predict it, you know, I find my, I find myself if I predict something, <laughs> I want to be right. <laughs> so I uh, have a tendency of, you know, leaning that way. You know, I used to do rock paper scissors for decisions like oh, that. Oh, did and you? I always lost. So now I flip a coin. Oh yeah, that means you don't play rock paper scissors real well. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to play it really? It just you know. Well, you're asking the wrong it's guy. It's random. Yeah. You're asking the wrong guy. He loses every time. <laughs> uh, some great play. High quality. Uh, our stats, our stats, our stats. We don't have stats. Looking for our stats. There they are. Here we go. You'll have to move that back and forth, Chris, for us when we want the stats. How's, how, how's that looking with our uh, overall performance and then miss shots? Miss shots, we're looking at two, two from Koping Chung and no miss shots from Alex Kazakis yet. Overall performance, we're looking at what, 891? 881 for Kazakis and 867 okay. that's for Ko. That's pretty close, 14 points. And we're tied at three, so Something's to be said for that, that number right there. Dry break. That's where most players change hands at the table, at the break. Going in on the one here. I think he's going to float to about the seven ball. And then play the two in the corner. Hit it a little thick. But it's okay. The pocket accepted it. Oh, he must have hit the point. 
if he landed there, right? Mm-hmm. He's got a good cut shot here. And actually, the angle brings him right into the five. So if he starts to overrun it, he might have to stop her. Yeah, maybe got into that one a little bit too much, but I think he can save it. A little bit of punch draw to the left. Yeah. He's got just enough angle to kind of just, as you said, punch draw it over to the left for the four. And after that, that uh, table looks pretty open for him. Yeah, it does. And at this level, folks, an open t table like this, is rarely overlooked by these players. They'll uh, put it away. Co kind of twiddling his thumbs there, knowing that I may not get back to, I probably won't get back to the table. This could be the hardest the hardest shot for position on that he's going to face. Yeah, I think the six to the seven is key here, which, mm. you know, I think once he's on the six pretty well, then the rack will be, you know, just routine. Yeah. But this five, six to the seven is very crucial. And he's only, he really only has one pocket for the seven, which will probably be the same pocket as the six, or unless he chooses to Run no. the six ball to the other. He has a little weird angle on this yeah. five, which is a little tough because with, with this new conditions that we're playing on, everything's kind of exaggerated with how how much the ball comes off with spin. He might be playing the f six on the same side as the five. Possible. See, just like that. And it leaves him angle to come over unless he got straight. He might have gotten a little straight on this ball, but we're gonna find out here. I mean, I it's a you can't really draw this because you're gonna run into that ten. You have a good chance of hooking yourself, so I'd use yeah, just using middle high, come straight across, straight across, yeah. But you don't want to get straight. You want to get a little angle. Perfect. Just not on the rail either. Hill Hill, the wildest things happen every time. On the rail at this There's juncture. always something weird. Yeah. As you can see, his hopes got up now. Yeah, Ko so. Ping Chung kind of looked up and said, hmm, I'm going to take notice here. He should still be okay. Good shot there. Kept his head down, stayed oh. through. Hit it really clean. He's got to make one more good working shot, and then he'll be out of this set, hopefully, for him. <laughs> See, you don't forward to here, Chris? Um, you might be able just to stun out, okay. but I also think I like the two rails just because the stun is a little touchy. Yeah, so he kind of check stunned that a little bit. Yeah, kind of a combination of that. Yeah, yeah. Because he could have gone to the opposite side, too. It's almost like he wanted to do both at the same time. Sure. And this looks like the first set is going to go to the man from Greece. He said, why not both? Set number one to Alex Kazakis. Players are going to go to a break. Maybe we'll get some stats up. What do we got here on, who's breaking the best over there? Kazaki's is breaking the best.
And here to break in the second set. Alex Kazaki's broken the first as he won the lag. Tell you how important the lag is. If you win the lag, you break the first set. You'll break the third set. And you will also have a choice in the spot shot, which side to shoot at first and whether to go first or second. I've only seen one um, shootout where the player opted to go second, and that player lost the shootout. I think he needs to hit this break harder. There's still paint left on these balls. <laughs> well, he's got to find a way. Sometimes you hit them too hard and they don't go in. Yeah. You make more balls hit in with just a real solid good stroke uh, at about 65, 70% than you do hitting them at, you know, 90 or 85. Wait, wait, wait. Who does hit those? Code did. Oh, he got so he got in his chair so fast I didn't even realize who hit him. <laughs> he had no idea. I mean, he knew right away he didn't hit <laughs> the ball. Dang. Good look at our crowd here. The crowd uh, is made up of uh, the teams from BCA Pool League World Championships here at the Rio, part of the CSI Expo, and the USA Pool League National Championships, part of the greatest pool experience in the world from Q Sports International. Looking for a thin on the one here, but there's not a lot of cover to hide behind, and you're kind of... Well, I just, I'm not a big fan of this. I, He might hit it thick with right English and play behind the eight, but it's so touchy from this far away. Yeah, behind the eight, he's going to drop in the in, in the bu in the bucket there. I think he, he's going to give it back, but he can play this thin, and the three ball may come into play and keep it there and bring the cue ball down by the five. Yeah, I just, I, I'd rather have my opponent shoot this shot personally. You know, it's just such a touchy shot. You don't want to open up the rack like that. If you have to kick after this, that's fine. But I feel like there's a good chance you sell out, too. Another play, if he hits a real thin, he come down by the two. He's, yeah. See how the three ball would hold it? Oh. It's an easy kick and stick, though, and there's space between the three and the, five and the nine to, to send the three ball out. Yeah, it's probably going to call the one in the side. Yeah. But the thing is about this shot, if you don't stick him on the nine, there's a good chance he's going to sell out the one in the corner. I totally agree. So the speed is crucial here. But he has so much angle, it's going to be tough to keep the ball there. Because you've got to hit the more of the right side of the ball. So, I mean, it's just, it's a very touchy shot. Let's see how it comes out. You know, just before the match started, I took a look at Coe's... Um, oh, my goodness. That was too good. <laughs> too good. And Do it again. <laughs> look at this. Now, he's got a thin cut on the deuce if he chooses to play it in the side. Oh, no, oh, never he, mind. He can't, he can't see, can't it, see yeah. it. Never mind. He can't see it. He's but this might be better, the way he jumps. He might two-rail it into the 10 and stop it behind the 4. <laughs> he jumps that good. I think he's going to jump play the corner and draw back. Yeah, Ko is uh, as good as anyone with a jump cue. And you called it right on. Think he might have got away with it? Or uh, can he roll this in without scratching? Uh, he can do, Alex will be able to do whatever he wants here. Really? Can't cut, it. I don't think he can cut it in the side. It's awfully, awfully thin, but he might be able to cut it in the side. Do you think he can drop back past the, the side pocket? Or is he looking for a safety all the way? No, I. it depends how he could cheat the pocket. Oh, he's going on the side. He's going on the side. He's cut it. Hitting it thin. Just make sure you do not hit the 10 ball. That's yeah. the biggest thing. He's using inside to go back up for the three. Yeah, good shot. Alex is off to the races again. And set number two. Trying to steal Ko's break, take advantage of it. In the first set, Ko won off of Alex's break, and let's see if Alex can do the return to favor.
kind of got in between here. But I think he can make the four in the same pocket he made the two in, lower right hand corner. And I might he might have to just bump this. No, he's not gonna bump it. I, I don't mind bumping this one here with a little bit of draw. Just so you can keep that bridge in the middle of the table as far as your hand. And you don't have to try to force something from the rail. Okay, well that's even better. Good thing he's not listening to me. <laughs> you know, one of the things I just uh, looked at and uh, it just reminded me, one of the big matches in the first round was between Alex Pagulayan and Joshua Filler. Now Joshua Filler beat Alex Pagulayan three tournaments ago. And now for the third time, third big tournament in a row, Alex defeated Joshua two sets to zero. Big yeah. match. In fact, I think we commentated that, Chris. That was at one o'clock this afternoon. That wasn't you with me? No. No, that was Eric. I yeah, it must have been Eric. I thought that was you and I that did that match. Yeah, we're about the same height. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was sitting down, remember, so. Oh, yeah, you must have thought I was standing up the whole That's time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, behind the seven eight. Does he get a roll? I mean, he kind of got a roll a little bit. I mean, we'll see if the six goes in. The seven eight combo is on. So the six, I don't think he has to use a ton of English. Maybe in between 12 and 1 o'clock, just put a little bit on it so it hits that short rail, long rail. And come yeah. back out for the middle of the table. Yes. I don't like using left on this, but I'm going to figure out why I should, I guess, soon. There you well, go. <coughs> you use left so you can stay on the right side, on the correct side of the ball, and it doesn't go over to the corner pocket. And I understand from pro players that it actually aids in pocketing the ball just a little bit. Interesting. I aim better when I use right on that shot. So you like spinning the ball into it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you ever spin shots, uh, you know, with the outside English to kind of twist them up? Yeah, but not not a ton. Not that far away. Not a ton, That yeah. was a long way away. Yeah, I think, I think it's all preference when it's that far away. Sure. Because all in all, you just have to focus on making the shot. So whatever you can feel most comfortable with is that's what you should do under pressure. And right here, you just do a little stop shot, shoot the nine to the side, roll up for the ten. Yeah. Yeah, stun out a little bit to keep the angle. All right. You come down to about the spot. No, he's a little straighter, so we can hit that rail, too. But I don't think, I think he's just stunning out here. He's just going to follow it. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. You know, if I, if I keep sitting with you and Eric, I might be able to figure out how to play a a shot or two. At least I'll know what I'm doing. Doesn't mean I can do, I can execute, but I'll be able to know what I'm doing and doing wrong. You've probably forgot more about pool than I've <laughs> ever learned. I just try to make ball and then make make, make every balls. ball until, <laughs> well, I mean, this is my slogan. You ready? Make ball till no more ball. Ah, there <laughs> you go. It's like caveman gibberish, but it's okay. It's a good, it's a good one. Because if you make them till there's none left, That's then you right. get to sit down. Especially in straight pool, you can do like 714. Now I don't like that game because there's like there's no end unless you <laughs> unless right. unless something bad happens. There's no end. All right, I want to leave on a good note. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a busy game. You know, if you beat the ghost, you can leave on a good note. You keep running balls in straight pool, you're there for hours. That's right. Or minutes, depends. Days. <laughs> days. For me, sometimes it's minutes, sometimes it's days. Mostly though, minutes. For me, it's a rack. <laughs> hey, there you go. Got to start at one, right? Yeah, as long as you make it one rack at a time. <laughs> and your opponent doesn't get any. Life is good. Oh, I don't play people straight pool. I can't do it. You should be my favorite game until I turned 21. It was my favorite game until I played someone that was better than me in straight pool. And I was like, I'm not going to sit here for four <laughs> hours. I feel like I'm watching the Titanic or something. Big break from Koping Chung. There goes the four. A uh, shot on the on the one. Uh, will he play it the one to the, the side? side, or play the safety and try to tuck him behind the six? Is there enough space to tuck? No, he's not. But there's an eight ball there. So let's see exactly what he does. Does he send the one ball down, or does he send the cue ball down? 
Yeah, he might send the one towards the seven. About a diamond up on the seven. And then just follow the cue ball right behind the eight. I think he's playing more cue ball here. But we're going to see what happens. I, 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 I think that's what he's going to do. But he also just might play the play the one down by the five ten. So let's see what he does here. Yeah, he played the first shot I was talking about. Just didn't quite get there, though. He says, how can I leave it short of the eight? Touchy shot. Very touchy shot. Now, I don't... That shot tells me he doesn't play a lot of one pocket because a one pocket player would have put that right up against the eight. Well, with clean balls, clean cloth, you're afraid of it jumping on you. It's going going way too far. So there is that. You have to. You you, you want to be smooth with it, but you have to make sure you fall through still. So it's a weird kind of dance that you have with the, the. Uh, you know. The table mm -hmm. and the layouts and all that, right? So here he's a little straight, but he could pop over. I think he's going to play the two either in the side or pop over for the two in the same pocket because there's no reward for making the 10 ball yeah side pocket how'd he hit that one pretty well like a champion that he is well there's two sets that are over already, two matches that are over. Koping Yi has defeated Mateusz Snigaki from Poland. So the older brother's already on to uh, win around number two. And uh, Wu Kun Lin has defeated Mustafa Alnar in straight sets 2-0. And they're on to their third round to the qualification, the winner's qualification round to the final 16. Coming straight back to about there. Now here's, an, here's something for a lot of the amateurs out there, you guys, most amateurs try to draw this ball back all the way back. He needs an angle to come down for the seven. So you just saw him point out just above the side pocket, and you're good here. Now you come back to about where it's at now. In, yeah, fact, in fact, maybe a little bit more angle to get to the three, right? Yeah, where you just don't have to hit balls as hard to get to the next one. Mm -hmm. That's why they leave the angles. Uh, it's just, you know, more spin, less yeah. speed. So this is going to be a lot more spin and less speed. So just this is a good shot to practice. Just, you know, just play your angles correctly and use the spin to get you there so you don't have to hit it as hard. This one, you have to go to that side rail, though, and come back out to the middle of the table. This is another shot that comes up every game. I think he's hitting interesting. He's going left on this. Uh, there's two ways. He's going to go three rails around underneath the 10 and up. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. I'm not a huge fan of that shot because you can overrun it like or not go did. far enough. Yeah, you overran it by quite a bit. I feel like it's easier to navigate going a little bit of stun right, so that way you can go one, two rails to the middle. But again, it's all a lot of this is personal preference. But there's two to three standard ways to do it. There's an old video, uh, lesson video by Bert Kenister, that teaches you how to get to the center of the table using that type of a shot, the follow three rail, back and forth, one rail, back and forth, two rails to get to the middle of the table and avoid the side pockets. For a lot of you amateurs out there, look that up on YouTube. And uh, if you would have got to the middle of the table, you would have had no problem. He had no problem with the shot anyway, but it just makes those shots a lot easier. And we are tied at one here in the second it might set. Go a little long. No, he's good. He is good. Very good, very good, very good. Nice out, Kazakis. $75,000 for the winner of this tournament. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars on offer. Second place is forty-five thousand. So, uh, 
gives you an idea of the kind of money these guys are playing for. It is a two-stage tournament, so in the first three rounds, if you lose your opening game, uh, if you lose a match, you'll play one more round to get into the stage two, which will go to three out of five sets. And it will be single elimination, so your successes won't matter except that you'll be seated and they will randomly draw the other eight players from the final 16 from the one loss side. So you won't get another person that is undefeated. And the break. Watch the one and the three go to the, go to the side together. The three ball hardly moved. Oh, I got it. There goes the one to the side pocket after a couple banks and a kiss. Tell you what, all other balls definitely moved. <laughs> that was a very hard break. Good cue ball control. You know when you squat the cue ball, so much energy goes into the rack. Almost all of it. Yeah. You know, that's why the ball kills like that. I mean, you kind of got to go for it, but you can almost feel dumb missing it, to be honest, though. Just as a player, if you go for it <laughs> and you miss it, you feel like it's not the right shot. But if you make it, you feel like it's the right shot, obviously. But I think he might thin this and go behind the 8-7. Oh, he's done in it. Yeah, that's the trick with it, though. You got to... You have to play shape as well. And when you're trying to play safety, it's one of those shots where you either have to go for it or just play safe. Because if you miss, you can't really be bothered about what happens if you miss if you're going to go all the way for it, right? So two-way shot, but ended up not liking what was left for him. Well, for a lot of you out there, if you've just joined us or joined us late, it's Chris Reinhold in the booth with myself, George Tehachab, bringing you the live action here at the Rio. Mm, not bad there. Mm, a pretty super shot there. Yeah, maybe thin three and put them, try to get him on the nine or you can hit it with a little bit of low right draw play the three into the eight bank it back into the eight and play the cue ball you're playing cue ball mainly here cue ball behind the four that's what he's looking at right there see where he's looking at his cue that's where he's thinking of getting the the cue ball he's just going to stun over there Yeah, I think he's going to stun with a little bit of low right mm -hmm. and draw this ball, aiming to, aiming to hit the 8 or the 10 here. Oh, look how beautiful that was. Wow. Put it behind cover, and even though he didn't get behind the 4, he got behind the 5. Yeah, just what I said. This is slightly different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just corroborating what you said. Yeah, he done did it. He done did it. He cut off a lot of angles here kicking, too. He's going to have to mass say a little bit, or he's going to have to bend off that yeah. rail with left. I think that's what he's doing, bending off the rail. I wonder if he's called the 10 in the side. Yeah, I feel like that's the move. I would have hit it just a touch harder, though, just so that spin doesn't mass say on you, and then you end up missing the whole ball.
A little reaching on the four here. Got to get that extension out. Playing for the five and the six and the seven and the eight and the nine and the ten in the same pocket. And no, I'm just kidding, just the five and the six. So playing the five and the six, same pocket as he just did on the four. I wonder if they're ever going to start using a glove. The Coe brothers? Yeah, I don't think they ever will, but you never know. I'm just curious. I never have been able to get used to a glove, so um, it just makes the cue too slick for me. Yeah, yeah. I like to feel the cue, and, and, and the I glove makes it too slick. I do too, but I sweat. I don't, so that's yeah. Well, you're just too cool under pressure then. No. <laughs> I'll let you shoot some shots for me if I can phone a friend. <laughs> I'm the last guy you want to shoot under pressure, believe me. Well, at least part of the reason I don't play anymore. At least you won't be sweating. No? <laughs> That's true. At least you won't get sweat on my cue. My hands don't sweat. But my arm just locks up. <laughs> That's even worse, sorry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Actually, it's not, not as bad if you depend the way which way you look at it. Yeah, if you don't play. <laughs> <laughs> Commentating, we don't have these problems. That's huh? exactly right. <laughs> I freewheel. Stroke everything right in. Yeah, the age is, um, well, Efren said it one time. Efren says, you know, I'll keep playing until my nerves hold out. Yeah, yeah. And when they're gone, uh, it, it's really hard. Especially when you're you're held to the standard Efren's held to. You well, know. exactly for him, but y you hold yourself to that standard. Yeah, it's true. So, Co wins the game and takes a two to one lead. Would you look at that? And this is how it goes about uh, to get to a third set instead of being like a couple of other players so far, and they're into the one loss side. Already. And Mateus Snigoki is quite the player to be shut out in two straight sets. Any of the any of the players on the Polish team. Yeah, that whole country is pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, strong. I, I can't say as strong as the Philippines because the Philippines. No, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. That you get, mad respect there. <laughs> mad respect for the Filipinos. We just had the Las Vegas Open, and in the finals were Lee Van Corteza, who won, Carlo Biado, who came in second, and fortunately for a lot of the other players of the 60, 63 players. Um, that are in this tournament. Uh, Pablo Biata already got to play him. Lee Van Corteza is not in this tournament. Yeah, invitational only. Sadly for him. That ball got swallowed by that pocket. It went right in, like it was, like that was its job. See, this is th this is one of those shots where I really like watching these high-level players execute mm -hmm. because they use so much or so little English and stun that it just looks effortless to hit. And if they hit it well, it just looks beautiful. Well, I'll tell you, Chris, I, I know you've done commentary with me before, but one of the things I've noticed is is just watching these guys day in, day out, and watching you know the top of the line players all the time. It really does a lot for your game. Yeah, of course. Yeah, a little, little thin on that ball, I believe, or a little thick. I'm, either way, he missed it, and they have a shot here. But yeah. it's so tough to get in the space he needs to get for this two ball, especially with a ball that's almost frozen on that rail. You have to hit it so thin and trust the spin. Yeah, this new cloth takes pretty nice here. And as long as you hit it down low like he just did, it's going to spin over pretty good, as it has. And he had that whole right side of the table to play shape to. Now he's got the other. He's got to worry about this uh, four ball. I wonder if he'll even think about moving it. Uh, I don't know if he can move it now. And he might move it into a scratch if he tries to move it now. But just a tap is all he has to do. Is the angle there to move it? Or does he go too close to the corner? Is it more on line to the corner? He's 
He's just going to play shape on the three, I think, by what I'm watching him stroke. He's putting a little bit of right on it, so he's going to stay down by the side pocket where he was for the three. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He might have a good angle here. Can he get that back up for the four? No, I think he's going to uh, run into these, yeah. Yeah. Just don't try to overjuice it. No. Sorry, it was for five. Not a lot of grease. You, it, know, you it, don't need as much grease on yeah. this one. Well, it is new cloth. It's hard to get that to bite good and come up there. Let's see what he does. He's driving straight back. He's going at it. He's going after the five here. Oh, no. Broke him out nice. Look, at there's a little gap now. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. But well, where do you play safe to? You well, just you go. Can, uh, that five ball will hit the seven and then go back down to that f in between the first and second diamond there. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just go behind the 10 here with left English. More spin, less speed, and just let the speed, the spin do the work. Hey, you crisscross underneath the 610. Yeah, there you go. Just lengthen like out that, a little yeah. bit right now. There you go. Hit that one uh, like a Greek god, like a, a Greek god. <laughs> Might be able to see an edge of this, but I'm not sure that affords anything that is worth it. He's going airborne, as I would too. I would, I would jump every shot if I was him for a day. <laughs> Just for he probably still win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm on the ten. I'm still jumping it in. I don't care. Put a chalk in front of my cue every time. Eklin Kachi has won his match in straight sets over he Luka the, Min. He said the seven ball? George, he's playing a jump carom? No, he's not. Not anymore. <laughs> Damn. Oh, and he wired the eight nine. Couldn't have turned out better for Alex to tie this thing up. Try to time it too. That's not going to work for me. Might graze the 10 here. See, coming over, you might want to get too flat on this because coming over for the 8 9 is going to be tough if you're straight in, unless you like to draw the ball. Would you ever? Uh, would you consider a bank on the eight to the side? Not, not when it's lined up like that, huh? Not when it's lined yeah. up like that. I will go ten rails to get on that ball, that <laughs> combo, <laughs> instead of banking it. But he only went one. Oh, I lied. Hello, Dougie Fresh. <laughs> That nice. one clean. Hit that one clean, so George. Clean. So nice. Now he wants to get off this rail. Oh, Should have got on. Shouldn't have got on it. <laughs> Would you bring this back just a little bit to have a sharper angle to avoid the corner pocket uh, coming across? I think you could follow a little bit of right and actually, actually get a lot straighter than you. Oh, there he, you go. Oh, yeah. he had more. Yeah, he had more yeah, uh, yeah. to work with. I, I try to follow that shot sometimes, two rails, and on new cloth, it slides right in the hole. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you got to be. That's why I was thinking. You can't I just rush stop it. it. No, no. But he got it off the rail, and that's all he needed. Because on the rail, it's a little bit tougher shot. 
because your cue ball's coming straight across. Nice out there by Alex. And we are tied to two in the second set. Alex trying to close it out, and Ko Ping Chung trying to extend it to a third. I'm just chuckling at something I just noticed. Oh. Ko just sitting in his chair, kind of meditating a little bit, waiting for his next chance to strike. Here's a good thing pounds. for the viewers out there. Whatever what is a pro is. player, a young up and coming pro player like yourself, think in the chair at a time like this. You're faced with a 2-2 two -two tied. Your opponent just, well, it's not, uh, your opponent is breaking. You can't afford to lose a set or you go to the one loss side. What's going through your mind? Where do you let your mind, where do you take your mind to keep it from wandering into the negative side? Four words. Okay. Do what I can. That's it. That was your good words. When you come to the table, just uh, do what you can. That's all you can do. Control so the why, controllables. Yeah, why, uh, why make it worse on yourself by, by trying to, you know, do too much when you just have to let it, just let it go out how it's yeah. supposed to go out, right? Well, that was the point of the question was to let our viewers know uh, exactly, you know, where to try to take your mind when you're not at the table. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to put pressure on yourself when there's no pressure anyway, you know? If the outcome is the result, if, if your only result is the outcome, then you're thinking the wrong way anyway. It's the process, not the outcome, right? Exactly, because you get the outcome with the process. But until you build that process, the outcome isn't going to be consistent anyway. But then we get to this elite level, it's even, it's magnified way more because one mistake costs you a whole match. That's correct. Especially so in a short race. Yeah, so if you just minimize the errors that you can control, that's all you can do, you know? The pool's already way too complicated. You don't need to complicate it even more. Well, the, you know, the one thing I say about pool is it, it has so many intangibles, things you can't control. You can't control the rolls. Wow. Wow. That speed was just beautiful. He's got two rails to get at it. Hard to measure this being so close to that bottom rail. Well, I mean, we're in Nevada and he's kicking from Colorado. Things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> Has to hit about what, the uh, middle diamond? And this is going four rails at it. And he is, he's going four rails at it. Got a hit, but no rail. <laughs> he says, keep that cue out of my face, please. As he walks through to get the cue ball for see, Ko Ping Chung. See how the, the tides have turned when he just executed what he knew he could. And then he got an opportunity, and now he has a chance to take a lead in the set. That's all from just keeping positive and doing what you can. Well, there's um, balls are spread out pretty good. Stop shot here, a little bit of a draw. He's got to come to the right side of the table for the five, the six, the seven. Um, only place that something can go wrong is from the eight, the six to the eight, and from the eight to the ten. 
Yeah, the four to the five is not a picnic here. No, that's uh, other than that, yeah, exactly. He'll probably get straight across and draw the ball back. Oh, wow, he really juiced that one. Well, interesting now. Mm -hmm. Can't cut it in the side. You've got to run the cue ball around too far. Play it in the corner. You have to bring the cue ball around. The 10 ball might come into play. And it's too straight for that. He's in a little bit of a funny angle here, isn't he? <laughs> he's just going to run he's straight down and play it in the side. He's in a pickle. Oh, he's <laughs> just. See, that's how funny that was. I he always, got straight I in. I think it's funny when people say that they're in a pickle. <laughs> like Never a understood. Yeah, <laughs> like a baseball runner going back and forth. I don't understand the pickle idea either. <laughs> yeah. More like a yo-yo. Yeah. Tangled up. <laughs> no, going back and forth. Faulty string. Between the bases. That just comes straight down, right back up for the seven in the same pocket. Oh, that was very well struck there. Barely he'll missing that nine. He'll just shift that gear to reverse. Or does he have a rail he can play with? Well, if you put in reverse, it takes miles off the car, you know? <laughs> That's right. Get a little too straight. No, he's good here. He's going to have a touch. Just a touch. Just a touch of high left. Maybe in between 12 and 11 on a clock. He doesn't want to go all the way down, but just maintain an angle. Perfect here. Here he might just use high English, but I like putting a little bit of left on this. But I think he's just going to high English. Yeah, just like that. Put a touch of left on that to get closer to the 10. Less of a cut. And he's going to take the lead 3-2 to two against Alexander Kazakis from Greece. Trying to, trying to get that third set. Yeah. The little interesting stat that our, our stat guys don't pick up on is, well, I guess they do with the break percentage, but neither player has won a game on their break in the second set. Kazakis has had 100% break success in set two. And he's down three to two. <laughs> in, wow. in set two, well... Uh, he made a ball in the break, but didn't run the rack or didn't get that rack. Yeah. So that's actually a, a good point you brought up there by looking at that stat. So something had to have happened, right? Uh, it changed hands and the other guy won. Both for both players. <laughs> Bing bong. Mighty Co to break. Breaking to make the one ball in the left hand side pocket. The four ball will follow. Kicked up. Kazakas is hitting them a lot more full. Oh, look at this four ball that fluked in. I think Kazakas might be seeing a lot of this 10 ball. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that cue ball is going to be right up against it. Where do you think the one ball gets put? You got to put it past in between the five and, the and seven. I, That's I, the path I would put it on. But it's tough because then you got to you got to put a little bit of left English on that, right? He's probably gonna go. He's probably gonna head right to the right of the two ball. You want to be careful though. You got to make sure you do one or the other. I think if you just I think play the carom. The natural carom to get behind the 10, hit the rail just before and roll up on it. You want him tight. You want him tight up against it. He might have let off on just that like one. That. Just, just uh, like that. Just like that. That's good and tight. Welcome to prison. <laughs> Here are the handcuffs. Actually, he has a straight path at the one. They might be fuzzy handcuffs, not regular handcuffs. <laughs> He's got a straight path at the one off the off the bottom rail there. 
A little bit of high right English? Yeah, uh, either right English or get the right angle, but uh, it's a hard angle to read, though. I will say that for it. But uh, he should hit it. It might lengthen. Oh, it oh. didn't lengthen out at all. He would think it lengthened out a little bit, but it didn't on this speed, yes. And that could be it for this set. Uh, this this could be uh, going to a third set. He's got some work. The six ball's uh, no gimme. There's some things to be done. There's a lot of work to be done, actually. So the five ball's got some work to be done. Five to the six. Hmm. Uh, Is he going to push out this five? No. No way. It'd be a good idea to, though. Actually, that's a good idea to just yeah, kind of move it. Just I didn't even think of that until he went there. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's looking at the combo. See, had he looked at it just before when he had ball in hand, he might have pushed it out. Yeah, yeah. He just didn't. I wouldn't have been opposed to that. Yeah. Big Co is in the stands watching. Co brothers all trying to help each other out. All of the, all of all of the Co brothers. Usually you'll see them both watching. Han must have a something he's playing on. Someplace. He must be playing the combo. Yeah, he, that's what he measured. So he must be playing the five over to the opposite. So he'll just stop the cue ball, hit this with just a little bit of pace to get that five ball oh no. to about the middle diamond. No, he just no, rolling this hold in. it right there. That's even better. Watch. It's almost like he knows what he's doing. So if he goes underneath the 10, he gets on the 6 on the side. Risky game. Oh, you he's play going go in under, that okay. way. Yeah, yeah I, I, uh, I understand. But if he rolls by the 6, uh, he's out of a shot. So I'm going to try to hold it for the 6 on the side. And if he hooks himself, he's out of a job. That's exactly right. Beautiful. The nine past the ten, George? I can't tell from here. It's like I message pool. You gotta look at the angles and tilt the screen. You know what's funny is sometimes you'll be wa I'll be watching the screen and I'll lean over to see if I can see around the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> instincts, your instincts. Yeah, exactly. Kick in. Exactly. So you know th those times. YouTube audience in the chat there. When you see me, when you hear, hear me chuckle, and you don't know why I'm chuckling, I'm laughing at myself for doing stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> just like you just did. I'll just go. Hmm. <laughs> I have a feeling the nine ball does go by the ten. It probably has half a pocket, but oh no, it must not, because he's not even thinking about. It. He's going to try to get where he just uh, indicated. And that's, I, I like guys that do that because then it makes me sound so bright. You know, George always calls them right. Yeah. Or <laughs> so I like was, it when they point. If this was opposite day, I'd just say that speed was terrible. But it's not. So good shot. And this nine ball and ten ball to send it to a third and deciding set. Oh, oh used all that pocket, George. Oh, yeah. my goodness. That's but we're allowed to, so it's a okay. much bigger pocket with that slide, yeah. <laughs> Sweater's delight here. Set number two goes to Koping Chung, our 2019 champion, Predator World 10 ball champion. And Kazakis is taking a break. And I'm going to as well for a few seconds. <laughs> See you guys soon. I think, let me move over here. All right, let's take a look at some of the stats while Chris gets to, takes the break with the players. Uh, player overall performance. In set number one, it was 857 for Alex Kazakis. In set number two, it was, um, I'm sorry, in set number one, it was 902. In set number two, it was 857. He won the first set, lost the second, so those are the changes in the stats. Let's take a look at uh, Koping Chung's 
set number one, he was 839, and number two, he was 800. So that means, that tells me that Kasaki's must have missed some balls. Actually, Koping Chung missed two balls in each set, one and two. Kazaki's missed a ball in set number two. So yeah, that one missed ball cost him quite a bit as far as stats go. Uh, breaking, Kazaki's was breaking at 100%. He, uh, in set number two, broke at 100% and lost the set. So he got tangled up during the the set itself. Ball's pocketed in set number two. Got 17 for Ko and 18 for, no, that can't be just two, two racks. Hmm. Everyone's clapping for Ko. Let's go, he says. And Alex, of course, not in the in the arena. But you guys take a look at those stats and uh, uh, they're not up there for you to see, are they? Actually, they don't come up on this table. I get to read them from here, sorry. Thunderous break there. And now this Alex sneaks back into the arena. He sneakily snuck back into the arena with break. a snack. And continues his, uh, goes back to his breaking pattern. Up 100%, makes a ball on the break. Looking straight in at the one. Three ball, a little tied up. Will that three ball slide by the five? It will if you don't want to make the ball. Okay, well, then that's out of the question. <laughs> There's a good look for you. No, no, I think he's going to roll it in and play the three behind the eight, nine. What do you think, George? Uh, I think he'll, he'll end up behind the five with the cue ball. Yeah, not a bad prediction. He might go for it if he thinks that he can make the three, correct? Uh, well, he's going to stay on the same line there. He can just put a little bit of high English and get underneath the six and stay on line for the for the five. But he's drawn the ball, so it tells me he's going to go behind the five. Oh, hit it too hard. He might have sold out a shot. Yeah, it definitely did. Going for this three, then coming all the way ac back across the table for the five where his hand is at. But good stroke here, get through the ball, and the position isn't really as irrelevant. I mean, isn't really as relevant because 
you're going to have some sort of a shot, but the three ball was what he had to focus on there. So five ball here, possibly the six in the same pocket, potentially the side, but let's see what he does. Keep in mind that a tied score of 3-3 three, three sends this match to a shootout. This is kind of preference. Could he use stun left to go two rails out, or he could use high right to just come one rail out. It's really just preference, but I think he's well. He better get good on that use the left. He better get good on that seven ball if he's going to play to the side pocket. And he's not. He's playing to the corner, and he's got a nice angle to come over to the left below the eight ball right now to play it to that side pocket. That's where he's looking at, right there. Now he's looking at the combo. Hmm. May not have enough angle to slide down there. He's, he should be good. Yeah, he's going to settle for the combo. Seems he prefers it. Yeah, can I get the 8-9 combo, please? With or without onions? Eh, grilled onions. There you go. 8-ball's going to track to the corner. He's going to ring cue ball just a little. Yep. Let's make sure he doesn't that stay behind. That was a safer way to play it. Yes. And I, I think I'd often I kind of wuss out on those when I just kind of roll them in. And, and then you get behind the 10? Yeah, something yeah. like that. But he shot it the correct no, way. That's a, awesome. He had the perfect angle for it, but that's exactly right. You saw, you saw that it was going to start to go that way, the eight ball, and so he had to avoid. And opening up the third and deciding set, Co takes the first game. I forgot what Co's break percentage was. It was down in the 50s, wasn't it, the last set? Set two. Yeah. Okay. 67%. Want me to turn your volume? 67%, yeah. George. Perfect. Thank you. And here we are. Co to break. Leading. One rack to them. I have to go to London in a few months. Do you think my accent was good? Um, well, there's both his brothers, the, the older and the younger. Coping Han, Coping Yi. Good cue ball there. Seven ball got ki kissed in, and he's got a shot. Looking dangerous. What's going on in, did you say London, or did you say uh, Great Britain? Oh, I was just asking how my, uh, my accent was. Is it passable? You're going to hear a lot of, hey, Yank. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, why? <laughs> Pretty good here. Did it get too straight? You don't want to go, you don't want to even threaten that side pocket with the cue ball. There might be a world where he follows this and tries to get just before the five. It's definitely a possibility, but I don't think he's going to do it. But checked over here just in case. Oh, look how close he oh came to scratching. And look how good he gets on his three ball. 
Oh, wow. Use all that spin to transfer. Once it hit the rail, to spin up more towards the three. That was a beautiful stroke. Looks to be in control this game. Well, as he runs these balls out, because they're pretty much out in the open, he wants to get the cue ball where he's at right now. Actually, a little bit more to the left of where the cue ball is right now after this shot. Would be ideal for the five. Couple Did he get there? Did he get there? A couple of scores for you. Albin Ocean has defeated Roman Heibler in straight sets. Feder Gorst has taken out Basar Hussein Abdul Mahid in straight sets. Ling Leo Yipkin has defeated Robbie Capito in straight sets. Mishko Fortunski has defeated Jason Shaw. Two sets to one. Aloysius Yap over Yannick Pungers. Straight sets. And now this nine and nine, eight, nine, and ten for Co to take a two zero lead and a break and run. Turn the ball in a little bit and dive into that rail and come out with low left English. Very good stroke. And look how easy he made this look. Well, there's no tomorrow for Alex. He's got to come out of that chair and get on that table and put some uh, score on the board. Because if uh, Coping he gets the three, that's the worst he can do is a shootout. He can't lose the set unless he loses it in a shootout. In order for that to happen, Alex has to win three games and tie him up. Carlo Beato has taken Shane Van Boning out of the winner round into the one loss side, two sets to zero. Kopin Yi has also taken Mateos Negoki. Straight sets. The Lion, Alex Pagulion, won the first set and leads three to two in the second. Karen potentially on offer for Alex Kazakis here. I don't think it's likely, but I think it's a possibility. I think it's highly likely because the one ball goes right to the pocket, uh, to the corner pocket, and the cue ball stays right there. So I like that shot. I like your call. Yeah, might hit it a little thicker than I initially would have wanted, but if it's a chance to keep Ko Pin Chung in his seat, you got to take it. Goes like an assassin in his chair, just waiting for you to let him back in. You can tell he's feeling the match. Kazakis is a warrior as well. Kazakis' mental game has improved so much in the last few years. You could tell in his demeanor and his confidence around the table. He is playing at a higher level.
Oh, didn't go for it. Played the safety instead. No. And he's left the shot on the one. Do you like to kick and stick here, or you want to just cut the ball and bring the cue ball down about where it's at? No, I like the, I like hitting it a little more full, if you can. And if you can't, I like to kick and put it to the left of the nine and have it come out to like the six. Yeah, I like, I like doing that. You're probably gonna get them on the two if you execute. Let's call it. It's a two-way shot. You can yeah. come to the right with a cue ball and have a shot on the two and use the two for a blocker. Hit it with perfect speed. And got his two-way about it. These shots were so much more effective when jump cues weren't around. <laughs> it's a long jump. Yeah. See if you keep it on the table. Can't be in the air when he contacts it. Yeah. Is that, that was the risk. Yep. Yeah. I nope. wouldn't I wouldn't mind shooting the two five here, to be honest. You go ahead, George, sorry. Uh, no, I was just um the two five, everything's open. Well, he's got to make it interesting, right, for us? <laughs> for, uh, Maybe not. I like his pattern here. I mean, he already showed us that he can get out when he's supposed to, right? He's got to do a few trick shots well, for if us. If Come if on. He, if he can get out when, he, like when he's supposed to, he should be out here. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm just messing with you guys. I know you are. Okay. So you drop back or try to fall off the side? I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. Yeah, I like staying above the ball yep. here. I'm gonna come back right to where it is now. Only he did it better. Slightly on the correct angle. Perfect. Stop. Roll forward a little bit. Then just keep the angles for the rest of the out. Good drag shot there. Got it to slow down a little bit. And now from Straight the seven to the eight. Straight back up. In between the eight, nine. Just like that. Straight back up. Beautiful shot there. You know, that was the one time where I thought he was going to use the outside English and ended up using the inside English. Reversed on me. But it's okay. Still here. Look at the way his arm's bending to, <laughs> to make this shot. Interesting. Must be very, very flexible. Look at that arm. He is actually uh, double uh, jointed, maybe. Well. Koping Chung is at a point where the worst he can do is get a shootout out of this. Alex in danger of going to the one lost side. And grave danger of going to the one lost side. Yeah, he's got one more chance to get a point on the board and then try to force this shootout. You know, when, when uh, Kazakis isn't exactly doing 100% great in the set, you could tell on his face. But when the opposite happens to Ko, you can't tell if he's up or down or, you know, I think that's a, that's a talent in its own. It really is. To sit there stone cold, um, emotionless, no tells, it's tough. He must play poker. <laughs> yeah. 
He has enough brothers to start a poker game, I'll tell you that. But I'm sure they play a lot of pool, believe it or not. <laughs> that's all they do. They've had, they have a booth here. Um, you know, and that's, that's something else for you guys. You know, the Coe brothers have a booth. They have their, it's set up with um, Zen cues, gloves, different co-branding items. Alex Pagalion uh, has a booth set up with chalk, gloves, branded T-shirts, and hoodies, sweatshirts, beanies. Um, this, you know, uh, player branding. Yeah, yeah. Might start become. Uh, it should be for sure. It should be. You know, because it's not like uh, the NBA or something where you have a favorite team you follow. It's you know you yeah. f follow players. You know, there's the USA team and Europe and you know Moscone Cup and the Reyes Cup coming up and all this other stuff, right? That you could follow a team, but it's only every now and then. But the players, they play tournaments every week. Oh. Wow. He's in trouble. Wow, look how he guarded that yeah. five. Oh, my goodness. With that safety, he, um, he, he's, he's going to have a hard time coming back. I this think he can hit this with full right. Would you mess in this a little bit, or you just hit with right English? Uh, I, I would try to hit a right English, pass the nine ball, and come up and hit the one, one rail. A lot of spin, and that's yeah. where it took him. He didn't really give it time to take. Kind of just hit the spin and, you know. Yeah. But uh, I don't think we'll see any more of Kazaki's at the table except the shake hands. Maybe he'll shoot the 1-5 now. Oh, I'm not going to get that, am I? I'm not going to get that 1-5 combination I've been looking for. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, he's just going past the 5. That's nah, all right. I'll let it pass. Is he going to hit it? No. And if you notice, people watching at home, these top players, they stay off that rail very well. Right? Yeah. So they'd rather go a little further and just play off the rail, make sure they have the angle. Yeah, they want to be able to use the whole cue ball with a nice level stroke. Not looking good for Alex Kazakis. There's some stats for you guys to look at at home. Yeah, and the Co brothers watching. I think it's good having that much support around you at all times, you know. Having someone in your corner at all times when you're playing, that's a big plus. It's an encouragement. One of the, one of the things I, I, I don't like doing when I'm playing and when I try to get focused in a match is looking at the crowd. I try to kind of stay away from that. Yeah. Whenever uh, I do that, I'm just sad because there's no one watching. <laughs> I don't mind. My, I, I try to focus. My, I play my best pool. When I just remember back in the days when you get in the zone, all you see is blue. It's four and a half by nine, nine feet. we got to get an AutoZone sponsor in here sometime. Get in the zone. Get in the zone. There you go. He's they gave me $13 to say that, guys. I'm sorry. Let's see, I just learned something. I'd get an angle where I go up for the nine. He's going to get an angle that he can just stop it for the ten. It's so wait, well, you got to think so about simple. it. It's just like, yeah, how would you so play simple. on a bar table? Exactly. On the bar yeah. table, I would stop it right there. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes we overcomplicate it just because we're on a bigger table. Mm -hmm. Man, this was a master class by Co in this set. He and just it takes this it. This ten ball and Co Pinyi moves on to the winner round number two. He's one. Round away from the qualification. Kazakis will have a few more matches to play to get to that point. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow, folks, with more of the Predator World 10 Ball Championships and the Women's Showdown here at the 
Pro Arenas in the Rio, All Suites Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Chris, do you have any parting comments for all your friends out there? A little shout outs? Stay on the correct side of the ball, my friends. There you go. And for everybody out there, this is George Teacha and Chris Reinhold. We're about to say good night. I think I'll say good night to my lovely wife, Judy, and my grandkids, if they're still watching, my daughter, Emily, uh, and my son over there in uh, Georgetown, Texas. Good night, and we'll see you all tomorrow.